In this video, we will look at traditional stormwater systems. Once again, I use the word traditional to distinguish them from water sensitive design systems, which have similar features but also some significant differences. We will look at water sensitive design in the following video. Water systems consist of two main systems. The primary system consists of the pipes and manholes that convey stormwater from one part of the community to discharge. They are usually designed for a 1 in 10 year storm, or a 10% AEP. However, storms larger than this can occur, and the primary stormwater system may not be able to convey all of the stormwater that is produced from a storm. This results in flooding occurring. The function of the secondary stormwater system is to minimise damage caused by this flooding and to move the excess stormwater to safe disposal with the minimum damage to local properties. <clears throat> this slide shows a typical primary stormwater system for an urban area. The water flowing off the road is called runoff. Uh, the road has camber of about 3% which allows the runoff to flow to the channel which runs along the side of the road. The channel then conveys the stormwater to a catch pit or splay pit. Uh, from there the water is piped into the stormwater system. The stormwater system consists of manholes and pipes and disposal outlets which convey the stormwater to safe disposal on local streams, channels or water bodies. Looking at a stormwater system, a drawing of one, um, this part of the drawing shows the stormwater system. The road is extending from the bottom right of the screen to the top left, while a wetland is shown in green on the left hand side of the drawing. In the wetland you can see outlet 2 slash 1, which is the end of the stormwater system where it safely disposes of the stormwater into the wetland. On the drawing this line is known as stormwater line 2, hence 2 in the 2.1. Upstream from the outlet is manhole 2 slash 2, MH2 slash 2. You can see it is a 1.2 metre diameter uh, manhole. Connected to it is DSP 7 dash 1 and DSP 6 slash 1. DSP stands for double splay pit. A double splay pit is two splay pits side by side to cater for flows that would occur from this part of the road. Moving upstream of manhole 2 slash 2, we find manhole 2 slash 3. It is also connected, it is connected to two splay pits, SP4 slash 1 and SP5 slash 1. You can see that the splay pits are connected to the manhole via a pipe. That connection is called a lead and is usually a 225mm diameter reinforced concrete pipe or larger. 225mm diameter is usually the minimum because you can get rubbish and all sorts of things uh, dropping into the splay pit or the catch pit which can block up the pipe. So you need to have a large diameter pipe to uh, so it doesn't get blocked up. So you're not designing these pipes for hydraulic capacity, in other words for the maximum amount of water that goes through them, you're designing them for um, to prevent them from blocking up. You can see there's a lot of detail in the stormwater drawing. The drawing also shows you how to uh, how the splay pit and manholes and the rest of the system are all connected together. So you can see the splay pits are connected to the manhole. The manhole is connected to a pipe, which is connected to the outlet. And notice the numbering, and it allows you to dis distinguish uh, what part of the system each component is um, part of. Looking at catch pits in a bit more detail, catch pits are used to convey the runoff from the channel into the stormwater system. Catch pits have grates on top, as shown here. Um, splay pits have an open area in the side of the curb to allow water to run in. They both do the same thing, which is to let runoff get into the stormwater system without creating a large opening that cars or cyclists can fall into. Note that catch pits are sometimes called cesspits. This is a rather old term for these devices and is now a days more rightly used in the context of wastewater systems rather than stormwater systems. 
manholes allow access for maintenance staff to the stormwater system. They are normally located at connections or bends in the stormwater system or where there are uh, splay pits or cesspit um, catch pits to be connected in. If it is a straight line, the manholes are normally located every 100 metres to provide easy access to every part of the stormwater system. They are normally large reinforced concrete pipes with a base, as shown in the photograph. The base is flanged to enable the manhole to be anchored into the ground, otherwise it would float um, when there's floodwaters at, this, um, at this, the, the ground surface. There are also uh, holes in the side which allow pipes to extend into the manhole. Not all manholes have these in. Sometimes you have just a, um, a wall and you have to cut a hole in it with a, uh, a concrete cutter. You don't bash it in with a hammer like some people do. The connection between the manhole and the pipe is usually concreted to make it watertight. Manholes normally have a cast iron lid uh, which can be removed to allow easy access but is still strong enough to allow cars to run over the top without the risk of them of the top collapsing and causing the car to drop into the manhole. The pipes used in road stormwater systems are normally 2.4 metre long reinforced concrete pipe. This is because they are normally bigger than 2.5 millimetres in diameter. Uh, below that we can use stormwater um, plastic pipes. Um, Concrete pipes also have the advantage that they are strong and rigid so that they are more resistant to the traffic loadings overhead um, than plastic pipes would be. Uh, they can range in size up to 2 metres in diameter and even larger pipes can be used for culverts. The pipes are typically connected by a spigot and socket joint so that is the socket and these ones are shown the spigot. So the spigot slides into the socket to provide an easy joint. Um, there's usually a rubber ring joint around there to make it a watertight. Uh, this is a good joint for gravity pipe systems where they are just working under atmospheric pressure but not so good when you have pressurised pipes as you would say for a, a water pipe or a pressurised wastewater pipeline. This photo here shows a pipe leading into a manhole. The connection would be concreted once the pipe alignment has been confirmed. When we have stormwater pipes less than 250mm and they are not under the road directly, then we can use UPVC pipes. These come in 6 metre lengths and are much lighter and therefore easier to handle. Uh, a couple of kids can pick up one of these, whereas the concrete pipe would require a digger to pick it up because um, they weigh a couple of hundred kilograms. Uh, two, um, and so it's, they're easy to manoeuvre and position much faster to lay therefore lower cost. They are also connected by a spigot and socket joint, although you can only see the, I oh know, you can see some socket joints there, and there's the spigot joint. So they slide in once again, there's a rubber ring there, making it um, watertight. Lastly, if the primary system, stormwater system, the pipes and the, the manholes is beaten, in other words, there's excess rainfall, and the whole stormwater system floods, it can't take any more water. This results in flooding because the system overflows. The function of the secondary stormwater, secondary, uh, stormwater system is to provide a safe flow path for floodwaters to make their way down to the local water system. As shown in the photos, norm roads are normally used as the secondary flow path. This is because they are less likely to be damaged by being temporarily flooded as would be the case when a stormwater event occurs. Normally the road is ready for use immediately after the storm, the floodwaters have subsided, which is usually within a couple of hours of the storm finishing. This is a much more preferable way of dealing with stormwater floodwaters than letting them flood houses where damage can be quite significant and costly. So you can see here the water is flowing into this, this river here. Um, the houses are actually um, mostly high and dry um, so therefore in a couple of hours this water will all drain away and everyone can start um, living life as per normal.